welcome back to my workshop and uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to build one of these wheel assemblies in real time and uh, obviously then we'll speed the whole process up for the balance of the eight wheels so the assembly yesterday took me about an hour to do uh, to get to this complete stage um, the assembly itself is reasonably straightforward but there is a couple of little things which I'll go over in the, uh, the, the session today which you should mind out for but um, I'm, I'm hoping I can speed up the process. An hour per wheel seems a long time, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So I'm gonna just get myself set up. I've got uh, all the components I need, the bearings, um, I've got all my fixings, and of course got my uh, Loctite ready as well. Sorry, uh, my thread locker as well. So we're gonna crack on now and do this in real time. So one thing to note, um, the, I've still gotta take the swarf um, out of this. Sorry, I'm taking it out of the camera. I've got to take the swarf out of this, uh, these holes here. But also, you'll notice that on this side, the holes are closer to the rim. So the rim is slightly further forward than it would be on the reverse side. So this will be the side that the brass couplings get affixed to, um, because if they, if you try and do it this side, they rise up on this sort of rim here. So that was that. And what we'll do now is I'll just use a small Allen key just to go through and remove the swarf again I just think it's gonna it's better to remove it rather than leave it and you can just you can just see where it's coming off there on the back of this you can see that all the swarf now that can't be any good if that gets into the mechanism this one's one I've already done so that's that that's fine um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, using the 12 mil hex bolts supplied with the kit I'm going to offer up two of those through the back side of the, the wheel Install one of the little brass couplings over the top of that. Bit of thread locker. And the nuts. And if you think this is fiddly, wait till you get to bolting the hubs on. I mean, I guess as a sort of repetitive thing, this is probably the, the longest period you'll spend building this particular part of the tank. I mean, an hour per wheel seems incredible, but I want to be careful. I don't want to make any mistakes. Um, at the end of the day, once this thing's up and running, it will be undergoing a lot of vibration and the last thing I want is anything to to fall off. I'll um, I'll wipe the excess of the thread locker off once I've got a few more of these on. Being a bit liberal with the thread locker, I just think that with something like a wheel, the last thing we want is anything sort of falling off. I mean, I, the, these are just sort of, I think these are more decorative than anything else. I don't think they perform any function on the, on the scale tank, on the original tank, I guess. They would be something to do with balancing the wheels. I'm just holding the back of the the bolt quite firmly and what we'll do is we'll just clean that as we go
just on that side note if you if you imagine if you were trying to if you were doing this the wrong way around and you were trying to put these brass couplings on the back side i mean there's not they don't mention this on the instructions either it's something i just sort of i discovered myself um i don't know if you can see that but it does it sort of tends to rise up onto the rim so i don't think that's supposed to be how it's done um again for all i know i could be doing it the wrong way around but there's no there's no clear definition of that other than it, i'm following the illustration in the armatech instructions and it looks right looks right feels right So these brass couplings come on a sort of a, a sheet and that's packed inside the instructions. Um, very easy to remove. I use a, a sort of Stanley or scalpel blade to cut through the soft brass. And again, as I've discovered throughout the sort of early stages of this build, it just seems the quality of Armatex products are fantastic. Everything seems to be built so well. With the, you know, there's a few manufacturing things like you know that we we sort of found, but I've had to work on. But you know, you get that in in manufacturing. I'm not that concerned. But you know, generally speaking, the quality of everything is so good. Again, I normally had the music on. When I'm doing this so it helps pass the time. Yeah, just wanted to make sure that that's all going on alright, so that's fine. I just wanted to some of these nuts for some reason don't want to go on very easily so that's that's better Both the wheels with their, I would guess, uh, sort of balancing uh, detail completed now. Uh, we're going to go on and do the, the hub. This is uh, relatively straightforward. Um, and the uh, instructions do ask for you to lock tight the um, bearings in place. So I'm just going to put it around the middle section of this, just a little bit of lock tight and then just use the the nozzle to just smear that round really don't want to get any of the, the adhesive on the actual bearing itself and the bearings come stored in these little plastic tubes we're going to need two for this hub They look pretty clean, so there's no need to shoot them with air, I don't think. So, so that basically pops in, in there. Just use my off-cut of a broom handle just to make sure that is in there. That's gone in there nice. And we do exactly the same on the other side. Just turning the hub. And then just and that bearing goes in there. That's gone in nice. You can see why it needs to be locked tight. It's quite probably quite loose, but anyway. So that's that. Um, right. So on the on the actual hub and the spacing of the holes 
it's quite important to make sure we line up the three components that we're going to bolt together and you'll see that where is it there we go the way I'm going to do it is there's this one here so you've got two holes a center hole here and then two holes the other side of that so basically what I've got to do is I've got to make sure I line that up so I want to put the wheel I'll look for the same pattern and that's it there see that that is fine then the next section which is the sort of outer hub which is basically the piece that just will hold this together and there it is the same repeated pattern the two holes a bit bigger space central hole two holes already that's it it's all lined up now these all bolted together with the point well 2.5 um, gauge 16 mil hex bolts which are the slightly longer ones um, and these go in this direction I'm going to pop in two and then I'm going to hold that in place and turn it upside down lock tight thread locker on there This is fiddly, but nowhere near as fiddly when we until we put the back wheel on because it's it gets awkward. I've seen uh, on the previous or the a couple of editions of this uh, Tiger Tank, the early version of it, it um, it had like the cap fixings, which I thought would have been better because you can get an Allen key in underneath, and I'll show you that in a moment. But um, these uh, seem to have gone. The way it's gone is uh, the hex bolts. I guess when it's all finished and painted, it'll look better. Now I'm just gonna do, I haven't tightened those up too, too tight just yet. I'll do the opposite. That schoolboy error. <laughs> Putting the smaller bolts in. No harm done.
that is it. One wheel fully assembled. That took about 50 minutes this time. Uh, I don't think I can speed up any more than that. This is a miracle. Or um, a couple of my mates come over and help me. But this is, um, this is gonna take a long time. But anyway, um, looks fantastic when it's assembled. Um, and I can just imagine it, how it's gonna look on the tank. Um, and I've got, uh, yeah, six, six more of these to do. So I'll crack on. <laughs> That's all the wheels done. Um, it's only taken two and a half days out of my life, which I'll probably never see again, but actually it was all right. Um, I uh, ended up getting some help with uh, some reinforcements with my father-in-law, who I'll introduce you to in a moment. But yeah, they're all done. So that's the, the smaller and the wider of the rims, all done, all cleaned, um, and all prepped for painting. So I'm now gonna go on and uh, show you in a moment the sort of the the axle arms and what i'm preparing for the next stage uh just in advance of getting things ready for painting so i just thought i'd share with you what feels like a mighty feat indeed getting all these wheels done all i'll say is uh definitely worth just taking your time being patient and you will get them done hi and welcome back um I've been recru recruited to help my beautiful father-in-law who's helped me get through the uh, monotonous, some of the monotonous stages of this. This is Richard. Say hello, Richard. Hello. Um, so we've sort of put together the axle, the main axle arms and uh, main bars. Um, reading the instructions extremely careful, I, carefully, I, I obviously, and following some advice on YouTube. There are four different types of assembly, so you have to be careful. There's actually two different diameters of uh, rods, which is a 5.5 and a 5 millimeter, and they position themselves in different locations along the tank. So what I've done is I've worked out, following the instructions, which assembly parts are which. Uh, I've assembled them, and I've clearly labeled them and masked them ready for painting. And just to demonstrate so that you understand. So this, this is uh, 
one of the 5.5s so if i was to use the thinner gauge there isn't a lot in it but you can you, you can kind of see a small difference between it's only half a millimeter so with this one if i was so that that is definitely the five millimeter sorry because it's too loose this on the other hand is the 5.5 and it's perfect fit so if you're doing this and you find that either this large one doesn't go into the the, the recess or the small one goes in and it's too easy you've you've got them the wrong way around and so i don't forget i've actually marked them on each one so i've labeled each one up so that i won't forget in the assembly and just masking the ends so when i do paint i'm going to paint this part this part but i'm not going to paint the pieces that need to be greased and go into the wheels so what i thought i'd do is i didn't want to bore you to death looking at the assembly of all of these i thought i'd just do one in real time and uh, show you how it's done thank you so we're now going to assemble one of these in real time and, and uh, just in case it wasn't clear on the, the previous um, uh, couple of videos I've done, I did go ahead previously and clear these out um, by just making sure they thread through perfectly and then clean everything up. So as you can see, it goes in and out perfectly. They will need, I'm using a thread locker on these, um but they you know they go in and out perfectly so that was well worth the exercise way back when i first started building this tank and then as previously just said you know when you're putting these together just be careful because um you know you've got to make sure that the right bar the right torsion bar goes into the right um unit i mean this is the right one this is the five uh five point five um and this is the smaller one and you can see it's just it's just going to have a lot of movement so that's not going to work that will fail the suspension system so i'm going to put that back where that belongs so really uh this is quite an any once you've worked out the components you need and the arrangement you need um it's quite simple and as, as long as you've done the prep work beforehand so i'm just going to put apply uh just a little loctite thread locker on here And then simply just offer that into, and it's nice and tight, up tight where it should be. These actual these axle pieces, I've had you know they've been, I've had some issues with some of them. I only think I think they're probably a little bit damaged in the packaging on the way to me, but um, I managed to resolve that. Um, but just again, a bit of patience. Um, don't give up. But generally speaking, they've, they've all worked quite well. As you can see, that's going in very smoothly indeed. And that is in. So that's that. Now, these are then secured. Um, I've, I've, I've studied previous versions of this sort of Armour, Armatec tank, and I think Armatec have uh, resolved some issues and now offered up some grub screws to, to lock these two pieces into position. So, again, just a little bit of Loctite or thread locker, sorry on that now these don't go all the way in I'm tempted to grind out or grind, grind them down so that they're flush but I might I may decide to do that later on in the build but right now I'm not going to I'm just going to leave it as per the armor tech um, sort of details and drawings But inevitably, I think I will probably end up doing that. And that's in there nice and tight. I'm just going to wipe off the excess thread locker. And then I'm just going to mask up, ready for painting. Simply just cover the pieces that you want to protect. Don't want to get any paint on the axle part because this part, um, I think I'm pretty pretty clear that I think I've got to grease those so when they spin around in the ball bar bearings they work perfectly I have um, 
and I have tested these on each one of the wheels to make sure they all go in nice and tight and spin beautifully so I'm just going to mark this up now so you can see sorry and that is an axle Y or and it's a it's a 5.5 millimeter so there is four types I'll just move the camera to show you that so we have X and Y at 5 millimeters and we have X and Y at 5.5 millimeters and later on in the instructions it shows you the arrangement of which torsion bar which goes in which location um, now the next stage for me I think is um, preparing to paint so I'm going to paint the these actual arms I'm going to paint the wheels and I'm going to paint the underside of my tank which is just out of the camera shot at the moment um, so that I can sort of get the tank in the right position without having to keep turning it upside down and then I'll do the top half when we're much further down in the build so I'll carry on and um, again all I'll say is uh, if you've if you've enjoyed this video uh, and this session thumbs up please so you like it um, sorry it's been a bit of a long session a bit of a marathon but the wheels took forever uh, but anyway I hope that was useful for you to watch and I hope you're enjoying the journey along with me again I'm Tony still trying to build this tank thank you bye